All right. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to Viewpoint for today. It's Tuesday. I'm here with uh, two of my guests who would be spending the hour with us. But first, let me say good afternoon to those of you who might be tuned all way by way of 102.7. Good afternoon to you. And if you are with us by way of TV Carib, Channel 10, we want to say good afternoon to you as well. There are those folks who also listen to us online. So wherever and whatever part of the world you are, nice having you in the audience. Okay. The matter at hand today, of course, of late we have been giving you an opportunity to get a peek into some of uh, those folks who have put themselves forward to represent us in Parliament on most of the lists, of course. We've had some from different lists. Some we haven't seen as yet, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Mm. But I do have uh, Mr. Rene Violinus. He is not relatively new, but yes. uh, he is accompanied by Solange Ludmilla uh, York Duncan, who made her first appearance on this show some time ago. But it's nice to have them back because the thing is, they have put themselves forward to represent us, and there's no better way than for us to get a good peek as to who they are and what they represent in order for us to give them any kind of consideration. So with that said, I'm going to say good afternoon to both of you, both the young lady first. Good Ladies afternoon, first. Wendell. Thank okay. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for then, having me. All right. And then comes uh, Rene Violinus. Good afternoon, Wendell. Good afternoon, radio listeners. Happy to be with you. This is Rene Violinus, candidate number eight on the National Alliance list. <laughs> And you are candidate number... I am candidate number 10 on the National Alliance list. All right, let me jump straight into it because there are a lot of things that people want to know, but we can't give them all that they would want to know in one hour. So maybe when you pay a visit to their homes, you might be able to have more time to talk to them. But uh, let me start with you, Lord Miller. What about you that you think makes you electable? What is it about you that you think one need to consider giving you a chance to represent them in Parliament? Well, if I, I, if I start at the beginning, you know, I am the, the daughter of former Minister of Justice Roland Duncan, and my mother was a former principal of the St. Martin Academy, PSV Solange Duncan. So I am a, I'm a proud daughter of two persons that have worked extremely hard for this community, that have given uh, a lot to St. Martin. So it starts there, and so I have actually always wanted to become a, a leader in, in the community. I studied in the Netherlands and in the United States. I even lived in the Virgin Islands for a while. So I believe that I have equipped myself with what is needed to be not only a competent young professional, I am a policy advisor at the Ministry of, Just, uh, at the Ministry of Education right now, um, but as well uh, become a person that has a love, a passion, and the, worth, the work ethic necessary to work for St. Martin and make a positive change in our community. You don't feel com uncomfortable there? Oh, definitely not. Mm -hmm. It's in me. It's in me. I'm excited. You know, the time is, is pretty chaotic. It's difficult. Many persons are, are uninspired, and, and, and that makes it really hard to postulate myself during this time. However, I am excited and I am up for the challenge and I believe that I have definitely what it takes to make a difference. The environment is not as it used to be at one time. Now it's very different. A little bit. I'm talking about the political environment. Yes. Because of what you've just said of how some people are so discouraged and everything else and don't want to talk to politics politicians. Yes. So I guess that's what you're getting at when you say that uh, that's the kind of environment you find yourself in at this time. But you don't mind. You're excited yourself. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I think this is a time now, especially for young professionals to enter the political arena. We have so much to offer St. Martin. And, um, you know, opportunity comes out of you know, difficult times. That is something that I believe in. You know, I have had some difficult times in my life and it has made me stronger. And so mm -hmm. I can never regret uh, being, you know, disheveled for a little bit. No, it's about becoming stronger during difficult times. And so mm -hmm. this is a time now for St. Martin to become stronger and to welcome new, powerful young candidates into Parliament, especially. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a little uncomfortable asking you that question, but I want <laughs> you to answer it anyhow, Rene, because you are such a different piece of cookie. Uh, why am I a different piece <laughs> of cookie? <laughs> no, I mean, That's one way to put it. in contrast to her who have just come on the scene. A tougher cookie. Yeah. <laughs> but I want you to answer. What, what what is it about you that is electable? Because you know, one of the things that is often left out to as well. None of us are angels. No, of course not. We have things about us that we sometimes don't even want to talk about. Right, right. But uh, that is besides the point here. Uh, why do you think people should consider somebody like you to to well, I represent think, them in parliament? I think for myself, um, I have always been an involved member of the community. Um, started off in my teenage years organizing shows, events, um, working in church youth groups. And um, so the social background has always been there. I've always showed love for St. Martin on whole and love for the community. Um, I've walked in integrity before the people. Um, money doesn't faze me, you know. So um, that's not something that people have to worry about when it comes to Rene being involved in any kind of shady dealings. Um, so I think that stuff like that makes you a person that people consider as a viable candidate, somebody that, you know, they can see as, for some of them, a big brother, for some of them, a mentor, um, somebody that does his research, somebody that is a people's person. You know, you engage people in conversation and you want to educate people about the whole political process um, for those that may not be paying attention, but yet are upset <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you work along with them in trying to educate the stuff that they don't know about. You try to bring it forward in as friendly and as amicable as possible to get people to understand the situation in which we find ourselves and um, realize that, okay, this is somebody that I can vote for because, number one, they know what they're saying. Number two, they're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And where so that's why I think people can vote Where do you for. work? I'm an air traffic controller by profession, mm -hmm. but I'm an artist at heart. Oh. So, <laughs> same for you, Ludmilla, just so that you can get a good idea. I work as a policy advisor in the Ministry of okay. Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports. Okay. I want you to stay, uh, Rene, with the shady dealings for a minute, because I want you to speak to it, because it seems to be something that gets in the way of a lot of our young people, because they find themselves involved in the wrong kind of things. Uh, how would you speak to your peers or people who may want to aspire to represent us and some of them are come well qualified but that shady dealing thing yeah, i think i would sum it up in just like one short sentence don't do things that you can't put your head on your pillow and sleep well mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. you know um being able to get a good night rest because you don't have to worry about um who you're obligated to what the consequences are of getting involved in shady dealings, you know, um, what the long-term ramifications or consequences of those shady deals are, how will they affect St. Martin negatively just because you wanted to do something in your own benefit, you know. So what about yourself? For myself, I don't have to worry no, about that because no, I no. never get involved. <laughs> no, what I mean, what I mean, no, what I mean is, uh, you don't have to worry about how it would affect St. Martin, but how it would affect you as an individual as well. I'm talking about what you, I'm just piggybacking on what mm -hmm. you've just said. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think what you're saying is important. Yeah, because I These are things that young people need to consider. Yeah. Is not to put themselves at a disadvantage. Not so much putting St. Martin as a disadvantage, but themselves. I think that you have to consider your actions long and hard before you actually initiate, before you go and make a quick decision for short-term personal gain, yeah. you need to look at what the outcome and the long-term consequences are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I also did motivational speaking with uh, groups of young people um, in the past. Um, I started uh, at uh, St. Dominic High. I did something. I did something with a second chance uh, education program as well. And I told the young men that with choice, comes consequence. There are always two outcomes for every choice that you make, a positive consequence or a negative consequence, and you have to decide between those two. Okay. And, you know, I could elaborate a little bit more, but... You're um, not here alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Lumira, I would like you to speak to that too as well, because it, I, I'd like to know how you're thinking when it comes to... Because when you get a nice offer, a sweet deal, 
Maybe the consequences are not even considered at the point, but you're taking it. And then later on, you're sorry. Hmm. So how would you um, address something like that? Well, for me, along the same lines as Renee, specifically when I worked as a policy advisor at the Ministry of Justice and in immigration, uh, you know, it's, yeah, that, that, that sector alone has, has, a, has a lot of opportunity for, as you call it, shady dealings. But for me, integrity and my reputation is extremely important. You know, I was raised well. And um, again, it's not only about the impact that it has on me as a person, as a professional, but it's also about being a mother that your child can respect and, and a wife and someone in the community that can be looked up to. I have also uh, mentored young women that, uh, you know, because of, because of their circumstances at home took took a wrong path but i realized that given giving them the opportunity as well as the lessons that are necessary for them to change it makes it makes an extreme difference you know i also worked with students at s4 in the netherlands and every decision definitely has a consequence you know and and, and like Renee said, if it doesn't affect you now, it will affect you sometime down the line. So integrity and reputation and just treating people with respect plays a big role uh, in the way in which I work. On a scale of 1 to 10, give me uh, your, your um, level as far as integrity is concerned. Oh, 10, definitely. <laughs> I, no, honestly, like I can sleep, like, I can sleep at night. I can really sleep at night and, and feel good about myself a and ten? the work. That's too high? Yeah. Why? Many. Let me give you a look. <laughs> nine point nine eight five. Ah, you see. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, uh, the message should be out there that this is a, a, an important part of our character, right. because when we have a problem with that, it has a domino effect. It goes right on to everybody else, especially when you are aspiring to be at the top. You are the ones who people see. I think there's a commercial, not a commercial, a Calypso, where one of the guys was challenged by his dad. I think it's the mighty Dando who sing that song. Remember that? Hmm. Uh, I, Daddy, I want to be a politician mm -hmm. because politicians have plenty of money. Hmm. Uh, wow. Yeah, and politicians. Don't you don't know the song? No, I don't. Um, I'm going to look it up, though. I'm going to Google it. No, <laughs> then I guess I'm not a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider myself a servant <laughs> leader. Yes. So you, would you want to be a doctor? Public. No, daddy, no. Now I remember. I think it was either two elections, uh, two carnivals ago. It's or so or, long before yeah. your time. Uh, maybe but I think Miller he sang it kept, over. Um, at home, but <laughs> you at least were out. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, the, the point I'm making here is, as people who are taking the lead, integrity must be high on your agenda in terms of being able to represent people. Because if you don't have any integrity, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. Exactly. All right, let's change the subject. Let's go on over to why National Alliance. Because uh, there are other parties out there, I'm sure, who you may want to consider. This is your decision, Lord Miller, or you were asked to be a part of uh, the grouping, any? Both, both actually, both. Yeah. I was asked, but I also uh, took a lot of things into consideration. And um, Like, some of what? Like, firstly, the, the new leader, you know, um, Silveria taking the party over, she immediately went to work on positive changes, bringing in younger persons, and just making a change to the overall feel of the party. So that was instrumental for me to work under the leadership of a young, vibrant woman with a real passion and love for St. Martin. That was one of the major, the major factors for me. Why did you look at her that way? You like what you hear? Yes, I said girl power. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag girl power, definitely. <laughs> But uh, same to you. Yeah, indeed. Um, this is my second election that I'm running with uh, the Alliance team. Um, you could have chosen any other party. Yeah, and in fact, I have been asked since 1998 by every single party that was formed mm -hmm. to run on their list. You name it, from PPA, SDM, <laughs> um, DP, uh, back then SPA, all of them have asked, and I kept turning it down because I wanted to make sure that I was at a place where I was politically mature. I saw the machinery, you know, take in some of my young friends, chew, it, chew them up, and spit, spit them, out. them out. And um, I said that I did not want that to happen to um, myself. Um, there was also the 
consideration for me where I started a young family. I have a young family. Uh, my eldest is five. My son is uh, four. And um, I decided that, you know, the timing when uh, elections were being called, with them being that small, was not necessarily the right time to get involved either. And so when they got a little older, and that was like 2016, that, um, you know, my little girl was a little more independent, um, I said, okay, well, I'll discuss it with the family and then uh, consider joining the list. Um, for me, the decision about joining the Alliance family is because it's a party deeply rooted in social issues yes. and deeply rooted in doing for the people. You know, every time we get a chance to govern, even if it's for a short period of time, there are tangible results that come yes. out of the party being in elected office or holding a uh, governmental office. And so I'm like, you know, that is the right fit for me. I'm a social person. The party is a social democratic party. Um, it fits um, the mold that I think I would, you know, be able to, to fit in. And so um, I decided to join the team. I was asked, of course, as well, just like uh, Mila, <laughs> and I said yes, and I decided, okay, well, this is the best team, I think. You know, we get stuff done. Yeah. Yes, uh, definitely. In order for you to be able to accomplish what you see in your mind being associated with this party, a lot would have to do with getting across to the people and changing the way of thinking. What would you say, and Ludmilla, you may want to take that first, what are some of the things that you think you need to get across to people just so that not only you can be considered as qualified people to sit in the position of representation in Parliament, but also to get them to think a little bit different. What are some of the things and what approach you think needs to come from a, a person like yourself to be able to accomplish some of those? I believe strongly in citizen participation. So citizens having an active voice in policy, in legislation. And and it doesn't happen much, but I think there is a lot of room for it, especially uh, with the technology that we have nowadays. Maybe we can't do, I mean, maybe it's possible to do, let's say, a referendum every year. However, I, I, I strongly believe in the fact that if citizens are able to voice their concerns and that those concerns are then um, used to inform policy and legislation, we would begin to see a difference in how our people think about their personal responsibility in governing this country. So for me, I believe that communication, information, as well as involving citizens in the day-to-day -day activities of government will start to change their mindsets because I believe personally in uh, the growth mindset, and so um, as opposed to being fixed, I think that it is never too late. I'm a very hopeful and optimistic person. So however the country has been over the last 40 years, that does not indicate that that, w that is how we, it's, con it's going to continue to be exactly. in the future to come. Mm -hmm. And so it is really now our responsibility as young candidates to sort to shift the mindset of the people by not only including them actively mm -hmm. in what we do, but also respecting them enough to inform them and keep them up to date and educated mm -hmm. and uh, and an, an active player. Mm -hmm. Same question to you, Rene, because you've been around a little bit more, so you have seen how people think and behave. Yes. Uh, what do you need to get them to think now, to get them to think differently? How do you? The last election them? season, I branded myself as the candidate of renewal, the renewal. There can be no renewal without Rene, by the way. So. <laughs> I'm encouraging people to vote for number eight. Um, it's a play on my name. Um, last time I was here, I think we discussed that. Or was it with Mr. Cool? But um, it's a play on the name Renee, and you know, renewal being part of uh, Renee being part of the word renewal. Um, it was about renewing the hope in our elected officials, renewing the confidence, uh, renewing the mindset of the voter, kind of like um, what my colleague here just said. And um, it is really about educating and providing the people with information. Um, one of the things that was part of my renewal campaign was the report card on Renee. And so it was something that would be presented in a series of town hall meetings. Had I become the elected representative of the people, I uh, had town hall meetings planned 
whether on a monthly or bi-monthly basis where we can uh, clique various districts together in a town hall and have them be informed about what government is achieving, what the parliamentarians are doing, you know. And um, I also wanted to do it for our community um, a year after the September 26th elections. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that was interrupted by um, the not so nice Irma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the plan was to head in that direction in terms of creating a series of town hall meetings where uh, the voter, my supporters, as well as people that they would be able to gather you know, in their surroundings to inform them and to begin to change the mindset of how politics should be viewed, how your elected officials should be viewed, and how difficult it is to get some of the legislation that people think you can snap your fingers and get passed past yeah. to inform them about those things. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to interject a little bit about the attendance of some of these important town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. That's another challenge. Exactly. They don't usually come out in masses mm -hmm. in Jones. So is that a concern as well? I think, um, I think that small beginnings yes. are a beautiful thing, you know, because they can grow into uh, a mass movement. Mm -hmm. And other people, I've heard other politicians talking about using a report card, for example, you know, and so that is just one spin off mm -hmm. that putting something positive like this yeah. out there has. Um, I am an avid uh, attendee of everything that Conscious Lyrics organizes, everything that. Um, the House of Nehesi Publishers organizes. And I can remember when we started off at the library, handful of people. Yeah. Now you standing room only at their events. Yeah. So it takes time, mm -hmm. but eventually the mindset of the people will come around mm -hmm. to seeing what it is that you're trying Ms. to do. Miller, how important, quickly as we go to a break, how important is this session, being able to talk openly to the nation about yourself and, and your candidacy and how electable are you? How important is this to you? Oh, it's extremely important. You know, for those that don't know me, this is an opportunity for me to really show and tell what uh, I am about and what my plans for Parliament are. You know, I hope that I can convince the voters that candidate number 10 on the National Alliance list, Solange Ludmila, York Duncan, is someone that they can trust, someone that they can feel um, extremely comfortable with that can also give them direct access to parliament. We shouldn't feel as if the parliamentarians are in their shiny ivory towers at the top of the world. You know, I am a servant of the people. That is my plan. I am already there. You know, I work as a, as a civil servant. However, my plan is to serve the people on a higher level. So this opportunity is wonderful uh, for me to give persons uh, a look into who I am and what I can do for them. Your yes. name is a little too long, though. I know. Rene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, along. How, yeah, mm -hmm. how important is this to you, though, this moment? In terms of getting to inform the, the populace? Yeah. Or, yeah, well, yeah, it is I very. I know how you think. Yeah, it is very important to me um, that people get to hear and feel where Rene is at. You know, um, like I said, I've always been in community service. Mm -hmm. And so. Serving the community at the highest level is to be their representative in Parliament. Mm -hmm. And for me, to get there, the people have to know and feel mm -hmm. who I am. And, uh, All right. Um, I, that, that was one of the questions. You, you, you are jumping ahead of me. Oh, here. I apologize. <laughs> I wanted to know how influential you are in the community. But think of it, because I'm going to ask you anyway. And also, uh, what did Irma taught you? And what are some of the things that you want to uh, champion? when elected. So these we'll deal with right after we take a short break. We'll be back. And we're back right here on Viewpoint for today with two of the candidates for the National Lion, young and dynamic of course. They have uh, been able to explain who they are and what they are all about. So let me continue that conversation by um, tossing any one of you can pick this up. but. Um, can you, can you paint a picture for me as to what do you see of St. Martin today? Uh, what do you see? Paint a picture. Tell me what you see and probably what need, needs to be done. Uh, I see a St. Martin that is at a place where it can start afresh with 
a lot of things uh, post Irma. Um, one of the things that I had hoped would continue was that sense of community and camaraderie that was established, um, you know, in times of disaster. And um, I hope that we can begin to really come together more often when there's no disasters and build a strong nation. You know, um, I think I'm that type of hopefully optimistic person who after 10, 10, 10, saw that as an opportunity to begin anew. Mm -hmm. And after every major event that we have, seeing it as an opportunity to begin anew. And so um, the entrepreneurial spirit of the St. Martin people was awakened after mm -hmm. the disaster. And so that's one thing to me that is definitely a positive, or a second thing that is a positive that came out of it. You know, people starting their own little things, selling tarts, Johnny Cakes, you know, making food, um, creating um, cleaning services, you know, and, and different types of little small business ideas that one friend of mine that works in a bank said, you know, Rene, the good thing that come out of this is that you're seeing local St. Martiners accounts starting to, you know, put on the little hundreds, some of them the little thousands. Some people have gone into different career paths you know, they might have been working in the hospitality industry and now they chose to go and swing a hammer mm. or to lay blocks, you know, get into construction. And so they're earning an income mm. from a different sector. And I think that that is one of the things that I see mm. going on right now. Mm -hmm. Before I ask you a question, think of what you're going to say, but mm -hmm. I just want to mention that I ran into someone who is working at one of the hotels here. Mm -hmm. She worked first making beds and making sure the room is ready to receive the guests. Mm -hmm. But today, they're doing construction work. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yep. and, and that's the resilience. Some young people are a little yeah. proud people, but yeah. um, to make that move of, of um, sure isn't something to look down on. Uh, indeed it is not. And in fact, um, I was vocational services director of the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise uh, in its inception. And one of the things that I learned is that there is nobility in all professions. You know, that no matter how small a job may be, once a person does that to the best of their ability, well it's noble. You can be a garbage collector, mm -hmm. but you're doing that garbage collection to the best of your ability and with pride, that make it's noble. It's painting. Okay. Ludmilla, paint a picture of St. Martin for me. Tell me what you see. I believe that we uh, are at a... Can you just hold for a second? Sure. I'm getting other directives here, so I have to follow this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have a call on line? Let's go to the call and say, good afternoon, caller, you're on. Good afternoon, Wendell. Good yes. afternoon, Renee. Good afternoon, Ludmila. Good, good afternoon, caller. Peter James here. Hi, Mr. James. I recognize the voice. I, <laughs> I just called to congratulate our two young candidates and at the same time to let the people of St. Martin know that I hope to God that they have been listening to you two guys, because this is what St. Martin wants in terms of when they talk about new, they talk about young representatives. The way you two are sitting there and representing yourself tells us that you can also do a good job once given that opportunity to represent the people of St. Martin in the Parliament of St. Martin. Okay? Thank you so um, much. And also... To all those, I'm sure that they can see now who is the cause of the disaster that St. Martin has gone through, and I don't mean Irma, besides <laughs> Irma, where we are today. They are jumping on all the things that we have started, the whole rebuilding, the roof repair program, and everything else. They could not see themselves being part of it the way they should have been if they really was working in the interest of St. Martin and its people. But today they just wanted to be able to say they do it or they did it or whatever it is. But I'm sure the people are aware now who has caused the turmoil. And the opportunity is coming. The days are counting down when the people have the right and the opportunity to make a difference. We have done, we have accomplished, and now is the time for the people to give us an opportunity to continue what we started in the best interest of the people of St. Martin. The National Alliance is your only option. Thank you both. Guys, once again, 
Congratulations. Thank you thank so you much. much thank you. All right. Thank you, Carla. Uh, let, let's go back to where you were, Lord Miller. I was attempting to ask you to paint a picture for me of what you see of Simon. Yes. And, and, and probably address maybe what you don't see that you would probably like to see. Well, I, I, I believe that we are at a crossroads right now, you know, after Irma. Um, I mean, we've been, um, the political scene has been pretty, pretty shaky over the last few years. But right now we are at a crossroads where we have the opportunity to use this time to not only get up, but get up stronger than we were before. So I want to thank you both for coming in and for sharing your time and your private business. You thank call you it that? So <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And once again, St. Martin, if you're looking for renewed hope, renewed trust, and renewed confidence in your elected official, vote for the renewal number eight on the National Alliance list. Right. I am Solange Ludmila York Duncan, number 10 on the National Alliance list, working hard to empower you and our communities. All right, got to go, folks. I want to thank these two people for coming in and for sharing. We'll be here again tomorrow with another interesting guest. We invite you to come and join us then. But for now, from all of us, thanks for listening and for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.